You are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. The interview starts now. Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine and today we have the great honor and pleasure at being here at the Keller Auditorium talking to who else but Lynn Keller. It's her auditorium it's and all mine. there we go. And we're here with School of Rock. So we're going to get to School of Rock, but I wanted to get mm -hmm. kind of go back. We always like to know a little okay. bit about the bassist. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started in music and on bass. Oh, my God. Well, music was something I started when I was like itty bitty, mm -hmm. like smaller than <laughs> I am now. But when I was six years old, I started piano. Mm -hmm. And I studied piano all the way through high school, private lessons and then a jazz studio in Evanston, Illinois. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Okay. And in seventh grade, I had to pick an instrument for band, right? So I, I looked on the shelf where my, my father was a professional musician. So we had things around and I found two flutes. I said, Dad, can I play one? And that was the beginning of a lot of things for me. I took flute all the way through high school and got some scholarships to college in flute. My freshman year of college, I started playing keyboards with an all-women's band called Ms. Conception. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I was in this band and the singer said to me, hey, would you like to play bass? And I said, well, what is that? What does it do? Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, well, you know, and she showed me. And so we started rehearsing. And each rehearsal, her boyfriend would bring a different bass for me to play. And I never put it down. Wow. I never put it down. And it has served me well. So Very cool. Yeah. Now, if I understand, if I recall correctly, from there you went on to study formally in Texas? I did. Oh, you are on it. <laughs> okay, yes. I moved uh, to Austin, Texas, and went to the University of Texas. Mm -hmm. And I was a music major there. I majored in theory comp. But at the time, electric bass was not a recognized major. Mm -hmm. And I didn't play upright. So I had to go back to flute okay. after not playing for numerous years. So that was quite the adventure, you know, mm -hmm. starting up on that again. But yeah, I had an amazing 10 years in Austin. And each semester, I would start a new gig at night so I played six nights a week wow. pretty regularly and a lot of gigs with some teachers that I studied with so it was exciting. Well the networking yeah. part of it is one of the big, greatest things about the education mm -hmm. is you meet other musicians right. and you kind of find right. out who you can work with. Yes, yes it's absolutely true. I was blessed. I worked with some amazing musicians and people that are still out there now nice. doing this and, and playing and recording and touring and yeah, that was a wonderful time. Very cool. Yeah. And how did the Broadway, because you've been playing Broadway shows since about 2003? 2004. Okay. Actually, I'd done some regional stuff prior. Okay. It was, it was a funny phenomenon how this happened. 2004, I was in Japan with Rita Coolidge. And I got this email from somebody I'd never heard of, a guy named John Miller, who just happens to be one of the biggest contractors for Broadway shows in New York. Wow. And I read this email. He said, if you're interested, I, I got your number from so-and-so, so-and-so. And if you're interested, we have a tour, a first national tour of Little Shop of Horrors coming up. So if you're interested, go ahead and get the soundtrack and let me know what you think. And I thought to myself, well, this is something I haven't done on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. I went and I have the Japanese CD at home. I listened to the soundtrack. I wrote him back. I said, I'm interested. And he said to me, okay, on your dime... You now need to fly to New York, and your audition will be playing the show on Broadway. So I flew to New York, and I audited the show a couple times. And it was really interesting, too, because the drums and bass were not together. Oh, wow. The bass was in a separate room with guitar. I had headphones, and I had a little tiny monitor where I had to look at the conductor. And I hadn't a clue what any of that was at that time. That was quite nerve-wracking. Oh, wow. But the music director that I was essentially auditioning for was there, and they hired me the next morning. And subsequently, I've done three shows and tours for Alan Menken, which involved not just the tours, but many of the beginning readings before they became a show, before they were official. 
So I did Little Shop of Horrors, Sister Act, and then they had asked me to come to New York because Leap of Faith was opening on Broadway. So I played on Broadway for the six weeks before we closed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is, the reality of Broadway is sometimes there will be something yeah. like Cats <clears throat> that will run an awful long time exactly, and nobody right? understands why. I know. And then other shows that seem like they should do fabulously and yeah, maybe and not so much. Yeah. But I can tell that, and, and one of the things that many of our readers that do get a good solid training, they can sit in to do something like a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it does require sight reading and a lot of ability <laughs> that goes beyond just like yeah. memorization. And the more complicated yeah. the score, yeah. the more important that, that is. Well, it's all, there's a level of difficulty with it, no matter how simple the score might be. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is in consistency okay. and focus and learning and knowing how to watch your conductor. And then doing that eight times a week with accuracy and excellence. And I think that is the biggest skill set that comes from doing this. So many great players just can't do that because they don't feel, they feel that it takes away their creativity by doing the same thing that many times. On the other hand, for me, I'm able to keep it really fresh by just thinking about how I'm executing this part every single night. So it's not a boring thing for me. Nice. Well, and the, the shows you're describing have had some really good groove yeah. going on, which for the bass, yeah. I could see it an attractive where I'd go, oh, I'd, I'd like to play that one. Exactly. Well, in Sister Act, one of the reasons that I got hired so often with Alan Menken is that my pop experience, I was able to apply that to theater, and they wanted that. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a lot of freedom to make up my own parts. The parts were written out, but I changed them. Gotcha. To, play, to parts that suited my heart, mm -hmm. and they loved it. So I made the bass book even hipper by just doing my own thing, and it was exciting for me to, to have that opportunity. Very yeah. cool. Now let's talk a little about School of Rock. Right. You've been t since last year? September of 2017. Oh, wow, okay. A minute on the road. It's all a blur. <laughs> and, and how did that come about? Um, the contractor that I had worked for previously called me for this mm -hmm. and seemed like a perfect fit. She called me months in advance. Nice. And they sent me the music and the, you know, the, the printed music and the soundtrack and all that. And I loved it. So that's kind of how this came about. I gotcha. Yeah. And this is very unique because the actors, the children in the mm -hmm. show, actually play music as well right and you teach quite a few of them if i'm right. not mistaken right i think i'm up to seven now nice six or seven but six officially as of last week god they're amazing they're just amazing kids we've had several incarnations mm -hmm. because the kids have either aged out or gotten too tall or their voices have changed but this incarnation is the one where i've done all the teaching and it's been exciting. I love teaching, you know, 11, 12 year olds. Mm -hmm. It's a blast. It's absolutely wonderful because they're little sponges. Yeah. They just, I, you know, I tell them something once and that's it. And it's shocking to me how quickly it just, it just goes in. I also teach one of the parents. She wanted to learn how to play bass. So it's, it's a full spectrum of things. Well, and being around this, I can't see why anybody wouldn't want it. If you didn't play an instrument, you'd go, I've, I've got to do some of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a great show. It's really exciting. Andrew Lloyd Webber's come out, loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, we are modeled after the London show, not the Broadway show. Okay. So, yeah. So, he's been thrilled with it, and it's just, it's, it's just been great. The audience response has been fantastic. You'll probably hear that tonight, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And tell us a little bit about the show itself, because I know we've seen the movie, and you mentioned there's right. differences between, again, Broadway, London. Right. I'm sure right. differences with the movie that they have to. Well, it's all original music, except for a couple of pieces that are from the movie. Okay. This is all Andrew Lloyd Webber's score and Glenn Slater's lyrics. And Glenn Slater is somebody that I've worked with before, and he's an amazing lyricist. So he was on Sister Act, and he also did Leap of Faith. Gotcha. So they take liberties, and they mm -hmm. do change things like that. Well, I would imagine, especially because in the movie, there was a lot of music that might be 
kind of copywritten right. or trademarked right. or something right. that right. belonged to rock bands of exactly. the moment that you could do in a movie, right. but wouldn't be fitting for a Broadway right. show. Exactly true. Exactly true. And Andrew Lloyd Webber is a rocker. Oh, yeah. He, he's a rock guy, and it's, it's great. I've heard quite a few of his, his shows, and I, uh-huh. I, I get it. Yeah. You, know, you go, okay, this is yeah. not a stretch yeah. for him. Now, the, the, the general topic of the show with School of Rock, and I know people have seen the movie, mm-hmm. how would we sum it up for people, kind of what's the show, what's the show about? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> how do I summarize this? <laughs> Loser guy takes on a false identity of his roommate and becomes a winner guy. There it is, in one sentence. Nice. That's it. It begins on a dark stage. Then a beam of light. And you just see me and my guitar. He's my best friend. He's a freeloader and he needs to pay some rent. Wake up, Dewey! What? Hello, this is Rosalie Mullins. We need an immediate substitute. The position will pay $950 a week. $950 a week? What kind of sick school is this? Now, as long as I am your teacher, there will be no grades, no gold stars, and absolutely no achievements! Why did nobody tell me you could play music? I thought you all were a bunch of little douchebags. Now repeat after me, I pledge allegiance to the band. I pledge allegiance to the and band. And I promise to give Mr. Schneebly full command. I promise to give Mr. Schneebly full command. Now with me in control of the band as a whole, we will rock and we'll roll with our heart and our soul. If you're in, raise your hand. Yes, you're in the band. I just wanted to be sure you had your presentations ready for tomorrow. What's tomorrow? It's parents meeting, Mr. Schneebly. I've got so much inside. If only you would listen. Let's go to the And roll. To rock and roll. <laughs> Very cool. Well, and one of the things, one of my takeaways, one of the reasons I'm really excited about this show is because we continue to talk about the cuts to music and education. Oh, gosh, yeah. And to me, anything that excites youth's interest in music and has them go to their parents and say, hey, I'm interested in music, Mm -hmm. who in turn maybe will have their parents go to their elected officials and say, hey, we're interested in music. We can't let this go. It can't be the first place that there's a cut. You know, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I've had the privilege of meeting a couple of the musicians from the Broadway show. They were at NAMM, his drum, the drummer and, and the lead guitarist okay. were playing, but they blew me away. Uh-huh. And, and yeah. they had just put together this jam moments before they sure. hadn't rehearsed or anything. And this sure. just went boom. Yeah. And, and I'm like, 
oh my gosh. So the energy and the benefits of music, whether you become a professional musician, mm -hmm. whether it just helps you be a more balanced person, mm -hmm. um, and the arts in this format, being a Broadway show with the music, it's just spectacular. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very excited about it, and I'm so excited that you are part of this, because oh, yeah. the last time we talked, and this is kind of funny, Lynn was releasing her signature MTD bass. That's right. That's right. And I said, you know, when you come through Portland, we need to chat, which uh -huh. reminds me, we should talk a little bit about your gear. Great. Are you playing your signature bass in the show? I am playing my signature bass in the show. Nice. Yes. Yes. And what other things, uh, as far as gear, I know that you're probably running through a DI in the house? Correct. I have a personal mixer where I can save mixes by s song, well, up to 16 mixes. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of mixes that I save per song. There's certain things I prefer to hear. Mm -hmm. So I have a mixer. I use ultraphones. Okay. Most of the folks use in-ears. I'm not the biggest fan of in-ears for me. I really love the ultraphones. The bass sounds so great in them. They're not as attractive, I will say that, but they're great for You're me. You're in the pit, though. <laughs> I'm in the pit. It's true. It's true. I'm in the pit. But overall, that's pretty much my gear. I do not have an amp. Okay. You know, it's a pretty simple setup. Any choice of strings? Oh yeah, Tomastics. Okay. Th those are, I love those strings. They're so expressive. I've tried many strings, but those for me really, really just amplify me, my personality and my playing. So yeah, I love the strings. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. And any other parts of your gear, strap? Comfort Strap, I have an endorsement with them as well, and they they make smaller ones for me. Nice. Everybody makes smaller things for me. The Tomastics are not short scale, but or medium <laughs> scale, but but everything else that I have is sort of customized for me. Nice. But yeah, I love the the Comfort Straps. Those have been great great for me. Everything else in the pit is your standard music stand. The stand lights come with the venue. We have the monitor clipped to my stand, mm -hmm. so I can see the conductor. Because oftentimes depends on how we're set up. There's things that get in the way and I can't always look up and see the conductor so I can sure. look straight ahead and see my monitor and have the conductor right there. So. Sure. And that yeah. way I'm sure you're not straying away from the score right. either. So it's kind of like the rear view mirror in your car. You exactly. want to be able to look through the windshield, exactly. but you want to be able to look back as That's well. That's true. That's true. Nice. Yeah. And looking ahead, this tour mm -hmm. is set to go on. I know how, what, Three what are we looking weeks. On? I can't believe it. We are Already. ending on June 9th. Okay. Yes. Yes. And if people want to find out more about the show, would it be schoolofrock.com or? That's a good question. Well, I, you know, I actually, when I want to find out more about the show, I just do a Google search and do okay. School of Rock Tour. Okay. And I'll find you know, the dates and ticket sales and things okay. like that. Well, yeah. I will I will take it upon myself. You will yeah. see down here I'm going to place. I'll find the link and I will add it here. Great. And that way, if Great. this tour is coming to a town near you, make sure that you catch it. Uh, you'll, I'm sure the energy is contagious. Oh, gotcha. um, we're stoked to hear this. I'm trying really hard not to do my best rock gestures. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in, in addition to that, mm -hmm. For the things that you're involved, again, as there's a finiteness to the tour, yeah. what future plans do you have? I have numerous things kind of in the works, in the works stuff that I, I can't speak to yet, okay. um, but things in the works. And of course, working on marketing the bass is important. Um, I have some very cool Lynn Keller bass t-shirts that will be up for sale in about another week. And that's exciting. Very cool. So, you know, if you want a Lynn Keller, you know, signature based t-shirt there will be one but doing other gigs getting back to some of the stuff i used to do mm -hmm. you know whether it's some church gigs and recital gigs and bar gigs and then then some other stuff coming up probably closer to the fall gotcha yeah and if people want to know more about what you're doing lynnkeller.com lynnkeller.com absolutely gotcha. absolutely well, we are grateful for you taking time to chat with us about your journey in bass. We're excited about School of Rock. Yeah. We're excited about all the stuff that you're doing. So folks, if you want to know more about what Lynn's doing, make sure you go to lynnkeller.com. This has been Raul bringing to you live from the Keller Auditorium yes. in Portland, Oregon on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.